our collective infant cry for unity defiantly refuses to be quieted by the sour milk of sectarian division. Our oneness in Jesus Christ is the foundation that firmly undergirds our true identity as the people of God. Our earliest childhood teachings seek to plant our identity deep in the thorny ground of race, religion, culture, class, gender, and national divisions. As the toxic soil of superimposed identities is slowly eroded by the forceful waters of loving truth, false identities are swiftly unearthed and roughly swept away downstream into the waterfall of spiritual oblivion. According to Mark's gospel, the Sanhedrin Council suffers severe moral erosion when it uses the improper surgical device of false testimony to perform plastic surgery on Jesus' true identity. The high priest says to Jesus, are you the Christ, the son of the blessed one? Jesus boldly replies to the high priest's question with the very name of God, I am. Jesus' response reveals that his true identity is firmly rooted not in the Sanhedrin, but in his oneness with the eternal I am. The Sanhedrin used Jesus' confession as a legitimate warrant to put him to death. The high priest says to the Sanhedrin, why do we need any more witnesses? You have heard the blasphemy. What do you think? Mark says, they all condemned him as worthy of death. Today, we are invited to share a meal together in memoriam of Jesus' death. Our reflection upon Jesus' noble death today liberates us from the fear of dying to various denominational categories, racial associations, and political allegiances. Jesus' death reminds us of the power of his fully committed life that was willing to make the ultimate personal sacrifice of being rejected and condemned by his own people in order to remain faithful to his identity as the Son of God. As we remember his sacrificial death, we also rejoice in the benefit of joining him in his resurrected life. His resurrected life empowers us to endure the harsh blows of mistreatment that strike us in the face because of our unrelenting aspirations for a unified identity among all God's children in the body of Jesus Christ. Mark gives a vivid description of how the Sanhedrin council viciously bites Jesus with the deadly teeth of a wild animal infected with the rabies of hatred. Mark's description reminds us of what we will suffer as disciples when we remain fully committed to placing our common identification in Christ above the false identities freely promoted in the divided camps of religious disunity. Mark says, some began to spit at him. They blindfolded him, struck him with their fists, and said, prophesy, and the guards took him and beat him. As we partake of Jesus' broken body and shed blood in this gathered community of believers today, we publicly proclaim Jesus' death and we publicly declare our willingness to share in his death. The Last Supper has been transformed into the Lord's Supper. The Lord's Table, the Lord's Supper transforms the Lord's Table into a sacred place where a divine meal transforms those gathered into the unified people of God, equipped and inspired to lovely impact a divided world. At this meal, we as the united people of God proclaim his death in a worthy manner until he comes by sacrificially laying down our lives for one another as he laid down his life for us. In this meal, 
we declare our spiritual fellowship with all believers and our common participation in Jesus' divine nature as God's Son. In John 15, 5, Jesus says, I am the vine and you are the branches. If a person remains in me and I in him, he will bear much fruit. In communion, disciples are reminded that we are merely branches connected to the divine vine, which is Christ. Since all disciples are branches connected to the one vine, we cease all attempts to cut off the religious limbs of others with the chainsaw of sectarian violence. The fruit of the vine is the divine substance that smoothly washes down the gastric tendency to place denominational loyalty above the common identity that all believers share in Jesus Christ. The fruit of the vine empowers us to give expression to the fruit of the Spirit whenever our own brethren condemn us to death for our attempts to maintain the unity of the Spirit throughout the body of Jesus Christ. Doubt may spit on us, sectarian criticism may blindfold us, Suspicion may furiously strike us in our faces with the distrusting fist of fear. Masters of narrow-mindedness may beat us bloody with their slave whips of conformity. Nevertheless, today in communion, we publicly declare his death and say we are willing to suffer and endure the hunting humiliation that seeks to put to death every runaway slave that seeks freedom and reconciliation in Christ Jesus. In Holy Communion, we boldly declare that we are sons and daughters of the Blessed One. When the Sanhedrin Council of Religious Division asked, are we those who share a communal yearning for unity among God's people? In Communion, we speak with one voice today and say, this is who we are. When asked, are we the ones committed to the Lordship of Jesus Christ? And are we the ones committed to the keeping of the unity of the spirit and the bond of peace within and without the restoration heritage? Around the holy table in one voice we speak today and say, this is who we are. If asked, are we the ones who believe that we can trust Christ to build his church without the walls of racial, religious, gender, and political division? Around the holy table of the Lord's Supper, in one voice, we speak today and say, this is who we are. If asked, are we the ones committed to joining God in the construction of a strong and vibrant faith community that will consist of doors of faith, windows of hope, and a foundation poured with the cement of love? In one communal voice today, we declare to the world that this is who we are.